In Path of Exile, the question I like to answer is usually not whether something should be done, but rather, can it be done? A few weeks ago, GGG moved the level limit on gems from 30 clear all the way up to 40, which I took as somewhat of a personal challenge, and I wanted to see if I could get a level 40 spell. There are more than a few ways to go about getting various spells to absurd levels, like using Cold Iron Points and Necromancer with Minion Spells, or some absurd plus 10 level Hands of the High Templar Gloves. But, for this most holy conquest, I chose to attempt it with Purifying Flame. Now, before I address my specific build, I'd like to address what I believe to be some of the highest theoretical spell levels achievable in the game. And I welcome anyone else to add to the conversation if they have any ways they believe this can be further improved. To begin with, four months ago, Reddit user Luco1 made a post about how level 43 was achievable using perfect plus 10 Hands of the High Templar gloves. The previous maximum theorized, but I would like to propose today that level 44 is achievable with Wave of Conviction and level 45 is achievable with Skitterbots. First, let's go through Wave of Conviction. Starting with the level 21 gem, we grab a plus 6 levels from Cold Iron Points, which, from a practicality standpoint, you should never use Cold Iron Points with a physical to elemental spell, but for levels, who cares? Then we grab plus 2 socketed gem level Honor Home, which equates to plus 4 levels, because we basically double the number because we get 2 levels on our Empower, which in turn adds 2 more levels to the spell. Next up, we have plus 2 to Fire and Lightning on a double corrupt for the honor home basically this allows us to get level 10 awakened added lightning and level 10 awakened added fire which those gems each add one level to the gem they're supporting if they hit level 5 and then they get another one at level 10 so if we have level 6 of those things we will actually get them all the way up to level 10 with plus 2 from the honor home and then plus 2 fire or plus 2 lightning from the corruptions on it like I mentioned earlier, we're also supporting with this empo with the Empower, which will give it plus 3 levels there. Then lastly, we wear a plus 2 Awakened Amulet, which basically gives us all the way up to level 44. But we can still go higher with Skitterbots, a skill that hardly benefits from levels at all, so it's only fair it can achieve true ascension in gem levels. With Skitterbots, we can start with a level 21 gem, and then we create a rare helmet with essences where we slam essences that give us plus two to aura gems until we hit plus three to minion gems and we need an open prefix where we will then craft plus one to aoe gems making it a plus six gem level helmet we then double corrupt it on our first try for plus four more levels of your choosing to make it a plus ten level helmet for skitterbots next we take out a small bank loan of a million dollars and we buy a plus five staff after that, it's pretty easily finished off with a plus 3 from Empower, plus 2 from Ascending Through the Dark Arts of Necromancy, and we finish it off with a couple of Awakened Support Gems to grab two more levels with our leftover support links. And there we have it, level 45. I don't know if that's technically the highest, that's the highest I've been able to theoretically come up with, so I'd welcome you guys, if you have anything to add to the conversation, if you can hit 46, 47, please let me know in the comments. I am very curious about this stuff, I think it's kind of fun to, to theorize. In conclusion though, crazy levels are achievable, but they're not particularly the most viable and require insanely rare items to min-max. I believe a diluted version of this and only take advantage of plus level items like Hands of the High Templar or good double corrupted honor home will result in a new meta for at least spells when PUE2 comes out and makes basically all these items 6 links where they previously were limited to 4 links. But we'll have to see what they do with these items with the all the plus gem levels and how they mitigate this, or if they nerf it, or if they don't touch it all, and in that case, I think it could be the new meta for spell builds, when PoE2 comes out, that is. Now, for my build. I made it with Purifying Flame because I wanted to consecrate the planet. I wanted to make it a holy ground, which everyone would stand upon. I was able to achieve 38, falling a bit short of my goal to hit 40, when I realized how I did not have the soul, or the passion, to go on more dates with Alva just to access her corruption chamber. As I could see myself quickly losing my own sanity, I decided against it. That being said, I hit 38 by using 2 plus 2 wands, a plus 2 amulet, a plus 6 honor home, specifically with plus 2 to fire gems, so that way I could hit plus or level 10 awakened added fire, so that gave me 2 more levels there, and then a plus 3 from empower, thus topping us off at 38. This sort of thing is cool and was viable enough to beat endgame content, but ultimately is still worse than just using a six-link chess piece, as theoretically I would have 
have achieved 50% more damage roughly at a minimum with a level 31 purifying flame, which is what I would have been at if I didn't have the plus 7 levels from the honor home. And then I would have two additional supports. But given it stays the way it is right now, when PUE2 comes out, I believe this could be the way to min-max your spell builds. Although this build ended up being fairly strong, I do believe it was carried pretty hard by the gear I had, and probably isn't necessarily one of one build I would highly recommend. But it still it still was mediocre. It was decent. So if you decide you want to play Purify, Purifying Flame, maybe this would be something to work off of or something to build around if you have a better way of doing it yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and give you an in-game explanation of my build items I chose, the passive tree, and all that good stuff. And you can kind of take with it what you will either. Hopefully it'll give you some ideas to improve your own build or something to model after and then improve upon yourself. So let's go in-game and check it out. We're now in game and I'm going to go over the gear choices and my gen link setups and the passive tree. So to start it off with, let's go over the gear. Uh, obviously, basically, I just bought plus two wands for both my categories here because I was just basically trying to get gem levels. Uh, I got one with crit multi and then other than other than that, I got just crafted on cast speed. Uh, next up, you'll see on my helmet, I basically have an honor home and I got it with plus two corrupted for fire gems. This is the optimal case for getting the most out of a single corruption because plus two fire gems is actually like worth plus three gem levels. Uh, plus two duration, plus two AOE, all those other plus twos, you'll end up with 37 instead of 38 where I got to here. And then we have a calm start because we're doing, we're basically building around having our main damage set up in this helmet here. So we have a free place to put in a calm start. We basically turn in some uh, Pride Before the Fall cards at level 1, which gives you a good odd at getting increased life or increased damage, stuff like that. I, I think ideally we'd want increased damage to probably be the best for damage in the long run. For our amulet, we awaken orb a plus 1 fire and plus 1 intelligence to give a bunch of levels to Purifying Flame. And we got really lucky on the awaken orb and hit tier 2 life. I originally was awaken orbing this amulet together for a Righteous Fire build. And ended up making a really good Awakener Orb and messed around metacrafting and hit Crit Multi. And I was like, I can't roll over that. And so I just kept it like that. Uh, next up for the rings, basically just grabbing Herald of Ash buff effect is a really strong ring to use with Purifying Flame, with Wave of Conviction, with any Fizz and Converting to Fire skill. Um, Herald of Ash basically double dips because you, you both gain Physical as Fire. And then if you convert all that physical to fire damage it also gives you more fire damage so herald of ash buff effect rings are super powerful whenever you use a physical skill and you convert it over to fire uh, next up for the ring i just wake an orb crit multi with level 12 assassin's mark on hit and then crafted life nothing too crazy about that for the boots we went with a chance to avoid being stunned if you want to go optimal for damage you obviously go tailwind tailwind's always a play if you want to go for damage I was trying to get stun immunity while casting, so I went for some chance to avoid being stunned here. And then I also got the stun avoidance here, plus practice caster. And between all of those things, you can basically hit stun immunity while casting, which is pretty nice in fights or in delirium where there's a lot of stuff stunning you. Optimally for damage, you'd probably want something like Tailwind, though. Uh, for our belts, this is a belt I crafted a while ago, and I keep reusing it on all my life builds because it's just really good for life. has a lot of resistances, and it's just nice. Uh, for our gloves, I think I picked these up for probably 5 to 10 C and called it a day. I forgot I even, I didn't min-max these at all. I think I, I think I hit the level where I needed to fix resistances, and I got something with life that fixed my resistances. I don't even, I don't even get damage out of the increased crit chance on shocked enemies, because I don't shock enemies. So that's a little bit uh, funny that I still have that, that pair of gloves. I didn't even realize. Optimally... You could get stun avoidance on the gloves as well here, and then you can just have your tailwind here. Um, so these gloves obviously can be upgraded. Now let's go into the gem link setups we have here. To begin with, purifying flame. You'll see here we got it to, all the way up to 38, and we did that by linking it with a empower. You'll see here and an awakened added fire. You see how once it gets to level 10, it adds two to fire gems. It's linked to. So that's, that's the kind of abuse we were getting out of the plus two fire and the plus two socket to gems of Honor Home. And lastly, we had a link to Spell Echoes. I think that wraps up for our main damage. Other things we used were just Orbit Storms, Power Charge on Crit, just to have some Power Charge generation, Portal Gem to teleport out of maps. We used... You wanted at least an Enlightened Level 3 to fit all these in. Um, I can fit them all in now, 
but you'll see I don't have enough mana to cast at this point. When I was actually playing with the build, I was using a higher level Enlighten, uh, but I just just to, for showing you what links I have, I, it's in Enlighten level 2, it's just a placeholder. And we had Zealotry, we had Herald of Ash, and we had Flesh and Stone. Flesh and Stone allows us to blind nearby enemies, it's really great for defensive mechanics. Herald of Ash is basically double dipping, and we're getting the basically the effects multiplied by 2 because of the Ruby Ring giving us 100% buff effect. So it gives us 30% 30 30 of Fizz is fire, as well as like 26% more spell fire damage. So it's really powerful. Um, also we have in our boots, cast one damage taken, Immortal Call, Frost Bomb. Uh, basically I was running out of ideas of stuff to use in some of my extra gem supports. A lot of times I get to this point where I'm like, eh, I don't know what I want to use. I don't have any good things in mind so I just throw in something random so I ch arbitrarily chose frost ban bomb to make it so enemies don't re regenerate life as fast if I have some really tanky regen metamorph or something and then immortal call for defensive things and then frenzy if I want to generate some frenzy charge a at any point. Those are the gem links for flasks I basically went for a life flask a mana flask because we can't sustain our mana cost is really high uh, with purifying flame at such a high level and the support gems so we basically grab Essence of Extraction and that plus a Mana Flask that tops off our mana, solves our mana issues right there. And then we grabbed an Onslaught Flask along with a Diamond Flask and a Quicksilver. I should say actually, I think when I was playing this build I actually was using a Diamond, uh, not a Diamond, a Bottled Faith. And I've, I've swapped it to another build that I'm working on currently. Uh, so I had really expensive gear, these plus two wands are not cheap, this amulet is really expensive. The Bottle Faith was really expensive. This build was, I think, carried pretty hard by the items I had. So now let's go into the passive tree, what we're dealing with here. Basically what my my general concept or plan was. Also, I should I just noticed this when I was making this video. I have allocated Vigor on this amulet, because previously I had it on my Righteous Fire Jug, which I needed Vigor. On this build, I could have allocated Constitution. I could have allocated anything. Vigor did nothing for me, so that was, I feel I feel kind of dumb. Never realizing my amulet anoint was absolutely useless for my build because I wasn't generating endurance charges. So, bit of an oversight there, but we're not going to think about how we could have had like a thousand more EHP or something. No, it wouldn't have been a thousand. I kind of want to check now, but I don't want to go buy two gold oils. It would have been a decent amount of EHP to get 14% and 20 life, though. Because we basically have a uh, corrupted soul, which allows us to gain our life. 20% of it as extra ES, so when we gain a lot of life, we also gain a decent amount of EAS, ES, which allows us to have a pretty high EHP pool. Um, so that's one of the things we were doing. We were able to consider doing this because Inquisitor has some nice synergy with ES where we get free regen, which will help sustain our energy shield, while we are also leeching life and regening a decent amount of life from Consecrated Ground, from regen from our amulet, and a few other places. I, speaking of which, I chose Inquisitor just to go for I'm going crit and have penetration and the consecrated ground pious path. This basically gives us elemental immunity, gives us cast speed, it gives us ES regen, it gives us mana regen, and on top of that, it gives us penetrate all, all enemy resistances. Inquisitor used to be a top end ascendancy because of inevitable judgment. Um, basically, that was back when there wasn't many ways to get around elemental resistances, and Inquisitor was one of them. And it was top tier, it was super strong. But then, basically, Wave of Conviction got released, Combustion got released, a ton of ways to reduce enemy resistances like the Helmet Craft, reduce 9%, minus 9% to nearby enemies. There's a bunch of ways you can reduce enemy resistances and pen penetrate enemy resistances now that Inquisitor, I kind of feel like, has fallen on the back foot because, so what if you penetrate 50% of Shaper's resistances? I can lower his resistances to negative 20, negative 40, negative 50, you know, with other... other Ascendancies which get more damage out of their other ascendancy points. So Inquisitor, Inquisitor I feel like is still pretty strong But I think it's kind of on the back foot at this point with the ways to penetrate resistance and lower enemy resistances that are in the game But we haven't played Inquisitor yet, so we chose to go with it um, Next up We basically just are grabbing life. We're grabbing crit spell crit spell cast speed um, on the tree ES, where we have really efficient ES nodes, because we are using Corrupted Soul, so we gain 20% of our life as ES. That means our life pool gives us about 1,000 ES, and then if we get some increased energy shield here and there, we can get a decent energy shield pool to go along with it. So these hybrid nodes are really good. We get Doom Cast, and we go through the, basically the Shadow Tree, which has a decent amount of crit, a decent amount of fizz damage. 
Lastly, we topped it off with one cluster jewel. We weren't getting too fancy with it. All we grabbed were Wish for Death and Master of Fear to give us Cull and a Nerve, along with a Jewel Socket with some Crit Multi and some damage. And then we grabbed a Crit Jewel to basically help our Crit get more Min Max to make it feel more consistent. We grabbed Savage Response along with Precise Retaliation and another Crit Jewel. And then for our large cluster jewel, we went with Sap Psyche. Um, this gives us some mana regen, some spell damage, Arcane Heroism, basically gives us more effect of our Arcane Surge, and it lets us uh, generate Arcane Surge sometimes if we forget to use our Flame Dash, along with Practice Caster, which gives us cast speed and chance to avoid stuns while casting. So that's kind of our Cluster Jewel setup. We didn't, we didn't do too much with it, nothing too fancy, and we grabbed Avatar to Fire to get fully converted to fire damage with Purifying Flame. So that goes over the basics of the build, how we set it up and everything. Now I'll go over Pantheon real quick. I did Soul of Solaris along with Rislatha to keep our life flasks up. And that's uh, that. And Bandits we did... I would say we should have done a Lyra for the Crypt Multi. Oh, uh, yeah. We did a Lyra. So we got a Lyra with Crypt Multi and all elemental, res all elemental resistances. So that's the character. If you guys are interested in copying it, I think it turned out pretty well. I don't think it was necessarily min-maxed per se like just doing the numbers a six link would be about 50 percent more damage than honor home and so stuff like that definitely not necessarily the way to go at this point yet but i think in poe2 there could definitely be something here with min maxing levels with an honor home so that's the build guys i hope you liked it i hope you like the uh, i guess discussion about how you can really min max gem levels in the game and i hope you guys took away something valuable from it and that's uh that's the video y'all have a good one Peace out.